Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for this introduction, and it's great to be here. Um, my first annual summit was 2014, when I was just asked by the material science and life science company, DSM, to um, further develop their circular economy strategy. And during that event, I, um, I listened to a speech of Mark Miodovnik, who is here also in the room, and he, as a material scientist, explained to me that um, Complexity is great if you want to plan for longevity of products, but simplification is a lot better in terms of material composition if you want to design for uh, circular economy, for, um, um, for, for, for looping those materials. And this is one of those slides that shows the amazing capabilities of us humans developing materials, but also the challenge that we, that we, uh, that we gave ourselves in bringing those materials back. And um, luckily, the year after, Robin Chase gave a presentation that um, got a bit of that pressure off our back as material scientists, because she talked about how more sociological uh, developments of peer-to-peer -peer and new business models also are part of the future. So for us as material scientists, that helped a little bit, because this was, um, it was a hard challenge to outperform uh, complexity in a way in material design. Um, one of the products on on my desk back then was adhesives. And adhesives are a typical uh, nightmare in the circular economy because they, they combine different layers of materials together and then you cannot separate them anymore for, um, for reuse of those materials. So um, you can imagine how lucky I was or how, how happy I was that an entrepreneur knocked on our door and um, he asked us, can you develop an adhesive that can decouple on demand? For our adhesive department, that was a weird question, because adhesives need to stick and definitely not decouple. Um, but a couple of months later, they found an adhesive that if you expose it to a frequency, it decouples. Um, and um, since then, we have been setting up a joint venture together with them. Um, I left DSM as the, at the headquarters, and I moved to the joint venture, DSM Niaga. Niaga is, again, spelled backwards. And everything we do is redesigning stuff um, so that it can be recycled back in the same product. We have scalable technologies for carpets, for mattresses, for furniture, um, and the carpets came from those entrepreneurs, but the other two innovations actually came from the foundation. I met um, Ecor, the, um, uh, the company that makes panels from residual cellulosic waste, here at an annual uh, meeting of the Anna MacArthur Foundation, I told the CEO that I was leaving the SM headquarters and went to this, this weird startup that had this, in, this, this, this adhesive. And um, he gave me a hug and he was calling me every day ever since. And he's still calling me a lot, but now we have a product in the market together. So he's calling me for different reasons. Um, and also, we met here um, Suki from IPEA, who introduced us to Alping, a mattress firm. And together with them, we redesigned the whole product of mattress so that it can be recycled back into a new mattress. Again, with the adhesive, um, only two materials. There's no product that we make that has more than two different materials. And with the, um, with the adhesive, foam is out because foam doesn't really work. It took us uh, about a year to redesign something that meets all the performance standards. But now we are there, we see that those products actually perform a lot better. They perform better on manufacturing, they perform better on hygiene. You can maintain them rather than throw the whole thing away. If my car, my, my tire is flat, I don't throw my whole car away. We do that with mattresses and that's no longer, uh, no, no longer needed. Um, so we bring all those products hopefully into, into our rooms. We are inspired by the top 20 landfill items. Um, we, we love bulky, complex products. But then they are in our houses, and we, we realize as a company that is, then it's, it is designed for recyclability, but it's not actually going to be recycled, maybe. So how to make sure that it actually gets recycled? That might be part of our scaling challenge as a company. And um, we met also here at the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, we met uh, uh, Jessie, the CEO of Provenance. She gave a talk here last year, and together with them, we developed a materials passport all locked on the blockchain that goes together with those products. So um, as a consumer, you can scan a QR code or an, an NFC chip 
and um, all the material information and uh, the, the manual for dismantling will be there and travels together with the product also to the recycler. Um, and then as a recycler, you know what's actually in. Uh, those materials have a lot of value if you pick the right materials. And we know there's other stuff on blockchain uh, like currencies. And now we believe that those materials can become a currency as well. Um, that is somehow exciting for a material science company because we have always been in materials, not in currencies. Um, but it's, it might be a bright future for us if we become a bank rather than a, 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 a group of chemists making materials. That's the story of... Um, so here you'll see um, how we, from the carpet, you'll scan it and, and you'll, you'll be brought to the blockchain where we have the story of every, everything that is on the product, um, everyone who, who made the product, and that not only brings an exposure, but of course also accountability for doing the right thing in, in, that, uh, in that value chain. Thank you very much.